Welcome back. Apple's AirTags have finally launched. If you've not heard of AirTags, they're an accessory which you can attach to some keys or a backpack, for example. And then if they get lost or misplaced, you can use your iPhone to track them and find them again using the Apple Find My Network. So let's get them unboxed, set them up, and I'll explain how they work. The AirTags cost £29 or dollars in the US for one on its own, or you can get a four pack like I have here for £100 or dollars. I've also got some accessories from Apple to show you as well, which we'll get to a little bit later on. Inside the box, we've got some paperwork, along with some instructions on how to set them up. But there are no Apple stickers here, if you were wondering, like you get with the iPhone. And of course, the four AirTags themselves, which are folded up in here. Each one is wrapped in plastic with a little plastic tag that, once removed, will close the circuit between the battery and the AirTag activating it and turning it on. They will also play a little sound when they're first activated. They're made from a plastic shell on the front and a very shiny metal backing. They're kind of reminiscent of the old iPods, which I just know are gonna get super scratched up really quickly, so I wouldn't expect these to stay looking so clean and pristine for very long. On the back, we've got an engraved Apple logo and some text telling you that these have Bluetooth LE or low energy and an Apple U1 ultra wideband chip, which more on those a little bit later on. You can actually get the front side of these engraved for free when buying from Apple, so I got my initials engraved on two of them. You can get up to four characters engraved, or a few select emojis too, and you can mix and match emojis and letters. They're super light at just 11 grams, but they are actually a bit bigger than I thought they would be. They are around 32 millimeters in diameter and eight millimeters thick, and face on, they're a little bit bigger than a 2p coin in the UK, and about three times as thick. And interestingly, ever so slightly magnetic too, which I think is because of the tiny little speaker setup that they've got on the inside. And here they are as well next to an Apple Watch charging puck, just to give you a bit of an idea of the size. It's also worth noting that these are water and dust resistant, they're rated IP67, so they can last up to around 30 minutes at a maximum depth of one meter. The setup process is really simple. First, make sure that you're running the latest version of iOS, which is 14.5 at the time of this video. If your iPhone is nearby when you first remove that plastic tab, a pop-up prompt will automatically appear on screen to begin the setup. Or you can start it yourself by opening the Find My app, tapping Add New Item in the Items tab, and choosing Add AirTag. It will then take a couple of moments just to search for it. Once it's found your AirTag, you can choose a name for it. They have a few different options here, or you can create one yourself, but I'm just gonna choose Backpack for now. Next, click Continue to register it to your Apple ID, and that's it. Once registered, the AirTag is linked to your account, so no one can steal it and use it as their own. After a moment or two, it will tell you what you can do with it using the Find My app. So let's take a look at that next. You'll see a map showing the location of where the AirTag currently is, and you'll have some options like play a sound to help you find it. It makes a pretty decent amount of sound too, considering how small it is. You can also enable lost mode here, so you'll get a notification when your AirTag is found again on the Find My network. And you can enter a phone number so that anyone with an iPhone or NFC enabled device can tap against it and see your contact info to help you get your lost stuff back to you. So how do they work and what is the Find My Network? Apple has hundreds of millions of active devices now. Actually, it's closer to a billion and all of these iPhones, iPads and Macs all feed into and expand the Find My Network. You can already use this to find your lost iPhone, which has GPS. Or since iOS 13, your lost phone will also broadcast a Bluetooth signal, even when the phone has been switched off, which other devices within range can pick up on and relay their approximate location from their own GPS back to your iCloud account so that you can find it again. Now, AirTags don't have GPS, as that just wouldn't be power efficient with current tech for something so small but they do have Bluetooth low energy. So they rely on all of those other iOS and Mac devices to relay their location back to you when you get separated from your AirTag. And the more nearby devices, the more accurate that location. So if you live in a city or even just a medium sized town, 
Just think how many other people are walking or moving around with iOS devices on them, all acting as potential location relays for AirTags. It's pretty impressive and it means that you've got a pretty good chance of finding your lost things again. This does mean that they can't really be tracked in real time. The location gets updated more periodically than say GPS would, but AirTags do have inside a U1 chip which is used for something called precision finding. This requires a newer iPhone which also has a U1 chip like an iPhone 11 or 12. And what it does is it guides you towards your item using visual, audio and haptic cues to literally point you in the right direction. It's kind of like a game of hot and cold. And it works pretty well. You do need to be within about 10 meters or 30 feet of the AirTag for it to be in the U1 chip's range. The idea being that once you've used all of those other Apple devices in the Find My network to get a rough idea of where your item is, you can then go there and once you get within range, your phone will point you to where you can find it. If the signal is there but it's too weak, it will tell you and ask you to walk around a bit to help try and triangulate the direction of the signal before it does then point you in the right direction. So what if someone decided to try and use an AirTag to track someone by hiding it in their bag or their car for example? Well Apple has thought about this too and they've designed it to try and discourage any sort of unwanted tracking. If someone else's AirTag finds its way into your things, your iPhone will notice that it's traveling with you and send you an alert so that you know it's there. But if you're with a friend who has an AirTag or on a train with a bunch of other people using AirTags, these alerts won't trigger as they're only triggered when an AirTag is separated from its owner. Only you can see the location of your AirTag and at the moment there's no way to share this location even if you wanted to so that would be a nice feature they could add in future for people that use shared keys for example. Apple also says that all of your location data and history is never stored on the AirTag itself and that the devices that relay the location of your AirTag also stay anonymous too. And that all that location data is encrypted, so not even Apple knows the location of your AirTag, or the identity of the device that helps find it. Now, when it comes to actually attaching these to something that you want to track, you've probably noticed that there isn't any sort of key ring or hole punch in the AirTags themselves. Although some people have tried adding one by just drilling a hole in it and actually been successful, so you can always give that a go if you really want. But to do it the way that Apple wants you to do it and to get the most out of these, you're going to need some accessories. Apple themselves has a few options like this leather keyring for £35 or dollars and also this plastic loop for £29 or $29, which does mean that these cost the same or more than the AirTags individually. But third parties like Belkin are making some too for much cheaper and I expect there to be a flood of other companies making other accessories too. Or at the other end of the scale, some very expensive Hermes branded accessories which generously come with a custom etched Hermes air tag if that's more your style. But £600 for a luggage tag is a little bit out of my price range at the moment. So let's take a look at the key ring first. I've got one in saddle brown but it also comes in Baltic blue and product red. But there isn't a black one just yet. Inside the box there's not much to see really, just the key ring itself. It is made from real tanned European leather and it's nice and soft to the touch with some really good quality stitching around the bottom edge. Along with a stainless steel key ring and a button popper to hold the air tag in place. So let's pop an air tag inside. The popper is nice and firm and the air tag fits nice and snugly inside leaving the rear and front exposed so that your engraving is still visible if you've got one. And with the way that the back of the air tag protrudes, it sits perfectly in the rear cutout, so if the button popper does come undone, it should still keep the air tag in place, which is good. You can then attach this to your keys, for example, or anything you want really. I have this moment accessory case, which is full of lenses and other bits, and I'm probably going to use one of my air tags to keep track of this. At the moment, I think that some people are just not going to know what these even are, or what they need to do with them if they find your lost item. It's not immediately obvious that they need to tap their phone against them to see any contact details, but I think that in time, as these become more common, people will recognize them as just being like the luggage tags that we use when we travel. Onto the AirTag loop now, and I've got one in sunflower yellow, but it is also available in electric orange, deep navy, and white. There is also a leather version available in saddle brown and product red. And I can definitely see Apple changing these colours seasonally, like they 
do with the Apple Watch bands. In the box we've got the Lou, and it's really bright and colourful, especially this yellow. People will definitely find this attached to your lost bag and hopefully find your AirTag. Again, the AirTag slides in and it's fastened in place by a popper and it leaves the front and the back of the AirTag visible. You can then take this and loop it through itself onto a backpack or a suitcase for example. And it looks really nice against this grey, it's definitely really noticeable. I think that both of these accessories from Apple are okay, they are well built and they do the job but they're kind of pricey for what they are. So I am going to be looking to see what third parties offer as well, and I'm interested to see what sort of unique holders that companies make for them. Now, in an uncommon move from Apple, the battery in an AirTag is actually usable replaceable. To swap the battery, you just need to press in on the back of the AirTag and give it a little bit of a twist. The back will then pop off revealing the CR2032 battery, which is a pretty common battery used in watches and other small electronics. In terms of battery life, Apple says an AirTag should last about a year, and you can check the remaining battery life in the Find My app. Now, some people have said that a thief could just remove the battery to stop you from tracking your lost item, but a thief could just remove the AirTag from your bag, so I don't really see these as a thief deterrent, but more as a way to help goodwilling people reunite each other with lost things. Or you could try and hide the AirTag inside your bag where it's not so visible. So there we have it. I've not thankfully actually lost anything since I've had the AirTag, so I've not been able to try them out in any real world situations, but from playing around with them and just seeing how they work, I'm definitely impressed with them and I think that they're, you know, they'll give me that peace of mind if I do actually lose something. If you've got any comments or questions then drop a comment below, I'm always happy to answer. I hope you found this video useful and you've liked it. I've actually set myself a goal of reaching 100 subs by the end of next month, so if you have enjoyed it and you'd like to see more, consider subscribing because that would help me out massively. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.